Okay, let's look at the contents of our kit. This card was designed by Jane Euchre, and there are a lot of pieces to it. Once again, your members love you to be able to go through this much die cutting for a kit. So you have several pieces of die cut flowers. These are kind of delicate. Don't worry if you rip one getting it out because we may just rip them just for the fun of it to arrange them. So take your several pieces of die cut flowers. You have those. You're gonna have this embossed and die cut front um, cover. You're gonna have two brown pieces that are identical and a cream colored piece that is actually stamped. If you have a different sentiment that you'd like to put on here, you are welcome to turn it over and stamp it on that side, okay? You also have this very small piece of light brown paper. You have a piece of medium and light brown paper. And then you're gonna have a larger piece of brown paper. So take this larger piece. You have a piece of cream as well. And then you have your card base, which she has also folded for you. Take these several pieces to begin with. Just make sure you have everything that is supposed to be in your kit. Oh, and this little piece of twine, piece of kind of mustard colored baker's twine. Take all of these things and set them aside because we're going to work with these two pieces of paper first. So set all of this aside. We're going to cut strips, one half inch strips out of these pieces of paper. One we're going to cut this way and one we're going to cut this way and they will be half inch strips now you can do this in any way you please you can take a ruler and cut these uh, by marking one half inch you can use your guillotine trimmer notice how i'm going to do this so this piece of paper is three and a half inches wide i'll just move to my three inch because i want half inch strips and I'll cut it. Now I'll move to my two and a half inch mark and I'll cut it. Now I'll move to my two inch mark, cut, one and a half inch mark, cut, one inch mark, cut. Now that's all I need. So I have a nice piece of scrap paper to save. And I have one, two, three, four, five strips of paper. Now because I'm going to be weaving these onto the front of the card, my other piece of paper, and it doesn't matter how you do this, you can do the light brown, horizontally and the dark brown vertically. I just chose to do it this way. So my light brown, I cut vertically. Whichever way I start, the next card has to be cut horizontally. So if I start at four inches, my piece of paper is four inches, or four and a half inches, I am going to move back to four and start cutting my strips. Three and a half, three, two and a half, two, one and a half, and then one, a nice piece of scrap left over. I can put my cutter out of the way 
And as you can see, I'll have long strips and short strips in two different colors. Now, if you choose to do this, you can cut half inch strips of paper in any color you like. You can use both the same color, but we get a nice contrast whenever we weave these together. Let's go back to our kit and we want this cover piece of paper that has been die cut and embossed. You'll notice there's an embossed side and a debossed side. We're going to be working with the back side. So this is the front where the dots are up. The deboss side where the dots are on the back, this is where we're going to work. So set that down on your workspace right in front of you and keep your little strips here together. So what we're going to do is weave this paper. If you have a tape runner, this is a really excellent way to do this. So it makes it much easier. We're working once again on the deboss side, the side that is impressed, not the side that sticks up. And I want you to run a line of tape just along the top. You could also use glue and do a line of glue. If you have Suquang tape, you could also run a line of this tape just along the top. You just want something nice and strong um, that is double-sided that can hold your paper in place. So in order to make this really easy, we're gonna line up with the lines here. You wanna make sure that you cover your entire opening. So don't set it like this. It has to cover the entire opening. And right now we only have glue at the top. So set your first piece of paper and I'll line this up with my grid so that it's easy to do too, because you want it straight. It doesn't have to be perfect, but line your first piece of paper up and press it down. So you have a loose end and a glued end. Then we're gonna just work our way across. And I think it's easiest to do this if you set it down next to the first piece of paper and press it down. Then go on to the other side and set it down. Now I have chosen to have a tiny little bit of room in between my pieces of paper. For me, it is easier to weave the paper and I know it's gonna cover every inch of my opening this way. If you choose not to have this opening, you may set your papers right next to each other. I just find this a little bit easier for me. Now, all we're going to do is weave these pieces of paper into this piece of paper. Now, if you've never woven paper or anything else before, it's simply one goes underneath, one goes on top, one goes underneath, one goes on top. And with these two different colors of paper, it's very easy to see over, under, over, under, over. Now we want these pieces of paper to stick down for us very well as well. So choose which side you would like this paper to be glued down on, left or right. Much easier if you don't do both. I'm going to do left and right along the edge, I'm going to put a line of tape runner for myself. Then I simply go over, under, over, under, over. Then I'm going to line this up where it covers It doesn't go all the way to the top. It just goes to where it covers inside of that hole. And then I'm going to press it down. Let's turn it over and look. And I have the beginning of my basket weave. So I'm going to take my next piece of paper. This one will be opposite. I'm going to bring it up here. to where it meets up. 
I have not pressed it into my glue yet. I'm just weaving my paper in and I want to get it nice and tight, but not smashed up to the edge. See how I left my little bit of room here? I'm leaving a little bit of room as well here. And because I'm not using glue or a very quick grab permanent adhesive, this is a permanent glue runner, but I can press it in once I have my paper where I want it. Let's see how it's looking. Can you see the basket weave beginning? Our next piece of paper, once again, just the opposite. So since I went under, I wanna go over this piece, under the next, over, under, and over. And I'll press it up to where it looks nice and tight, but not smashed. I'm trying to keep my papers straight-ish. It's a basket weave, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can already see how pretty it's looking from the back, but look at the front. Is that a gorgeous card base? You're gonna keep going, just being opposite, weaving your basket of paper And because we've only glued down one side at this point, it's so much easier to work with. I think this is so beautiful. I have never done a card base like this, and I loved learning it. As you're working your way down your basket weave, if you feel that um, anything is crooked or doesn't look right, like this piece of paper keeps wanting to pull in, you just adjust it as you're working and then press it in place. The secret to making this easy is only having your adhesive on one side as you're working. And take your time and enjoy this process because you get such a beautiful background for not a lot of work. And our last piece of paper will be opposite once again. And we have completely filled in our background. Let's turn it over and look. Isn't that beautiful? Now because we want all of this to stay in place, we do want to tack these edges down. So if you would like to do that with glue runner, very easily, you can just put glue runner on the backs of the little pieces that are sticking up and stick them down. For me, it's just a little bit easier to use my glue. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue at the end of each tab. Remember with glue, you do have to hold down for a second. That is the difference between tape runner and glue is tape runner is instant nearly. And glue, you have to hold down for just a moment. I'm picking up all my little edges and putting glue under them. The other thing I really want the, to happen for this card is I want if someone wants to save this for a very long time I don't know if you guys have had this happen where you have a card in your stash that you didn't mail out that was maybe your uh, sample card and the glue runner dries out and parts of it fall apart I think glue technology has gotten better so hopefully that's not going to be a case for us you know later as we work through all that, but I just use glue because I know it's permanent and it lasts a very, very, very long time. So we have created our card base. Your first step is to glue your dark brown card on the outside of your card. You can choose to do this with glue, to cling tape, however you normally put down the front of your cards.
Next, we're going to glue this right on top. So our next step is to grab our flowers, and we only want our flowers right now. So keep all the other pieces of your kit over here and grab your flowers. So you have this nice large leaf, you have these little yellow flowers and these pink flowers. And what you want to do is arrange these in your hand where you think they look pretty. Just gather them and sort of arrange them where they look pretty to you. Now, this is going to be too long if you have everything together, so don't be afraid to tear something off and maybe put it in a different place in the arrangement. Just arrange it where you think it looks pretty in your hand. Now, if you prefer, before you start arranging these flowers, you can color them. So here's the card that is just your die cuts, and here's the card that are die cuts and they're colored. Now, it does add a little bit to the card, but it's completely up to you whether or not you want to put the time and effort into adding the little dots of color on these die cuts. Either way, it makes an absolutely beautiful card. So your die cuts come uncolored, just like this, and they're beautiful this way. It makes a beautiful card without any more effort than this. Jean also gave me some that she had colored just to give them a bit more dimension. So if you prefer to color them, for example, it made the stems of this pink uh, green the stems of this yellow green and added a little bit of dimension to it. So whichever way you prefer. Also on this one, we tore the little small pieces off and glued them back in where we wanted them instead of where they were on the die cut. So you can arrange these flowers however you like. Once you have them either colored or not, completely up to you, Arrange them in your hand to where you think they look pretty on the card. You're going to take this small beige piece of paper and you're going to want to put adhesive on the inside of it, but first fold it into thirds, and this does not have to be perfect. You can just eyeball it. about thirds. Once again, that's not perfect, but this is going to be our little band that holds our flowers together. You can use glue runner in here. I'm going to use glue. So I have my glue. I have my flowers arranged how I like them. So I'm gonna carefully pick them up. Gather them together. And put them into that band. So this will hold them all together. And because I'm using glue, I'm going to press for just a moment to make that set. And then I'm going to arrange them onto my card. Now this is where a small glue, uh, a small tipped glue will be handy, will come in handy, because once you glue your band down to the card,
You'll also want to put some glue on different places on your flowers so that when you get it onto your card base, you can pull them out and arrange them where you want them to stay. So a little bit of glue goes a long way in this case. I want this sort of to the left-hand side of my card. And then, since I'm using a dry, clear glue, I don't have to be really super fussy about, oh no, I got a little bit of glue on the front of something, it should dry clear. I'm going to arrange my flowers where I want them. Press down that glue a little bit. until I'm happy with my arrangement. And you can always go in and put a dab of glue on the back of a few things. The next thing I want to show you, and I think this is genius, if you have these two pieces are exactly the same size, but you want a bit of an outline, but you can't get an outline all the way around with the exact same sized pieces. This is such a brilliant idea. Cut three, two in your background, and one in your foreground color. Cut one of them horizontally and cut one of them vertically down the center. Now, by arranging them with a little bit of space in between and gluing them like this, you have your outline on the outside. that up, get your shadow how you want it, and press down. You can also do this with glue runner. I got quite a bit of glue on there. I am a very messy gluer. Now we're going to do the other side. Line it up with a nice shadow and press down. Now for our top and bottom shadows, we're going to do the same thing. See how that just completes the outline? A little bit of glue here. Now I've done this pretty wide. You can do it very narrow up to very wide and have your larger outline. The other thing this does for you, it makes it a bit thick, so it slightly pops it up as well. You can always put Stampin' Dimensionals or pop-up dots behind it as well, but that gives you that lovely outline, even though you didn't have the next size up, or if the next size up was just bigger than you wanted, then we're going to glue this onto our card. Once again, you could pop this up if you prefer. I prefer not to. I like a card that mails easily because most of my cards get mailed. Now our last step, well not exactly our last step because we haven't stamped our sentiment to put this inside the card, but the last step for the front of our card is to tie a bow with your baker's twine and then put a dot of glue right here.
and glue my bow to the wrapper of my flowers. You can do this with a glue dot if you prefer. So that's our card. You can also do a basket weave with any paper that you may have, any frame that you may have. I think this is a great um, technique that we learned today to do the basket weaving. And I love this handy tip about having the outline. Thanks so much for joining me. And thank you, Jean, for designing an absolutely beautiful card that we can make our own. You can replicate this card once again with any paper colors, with any frame to hide the edges of your basket weaving, and any floral dyes or stamps that you have by arranging them, coloring them, cutting them out, and arranging them in your hand and making a bouquet of your choice. The last thing you'll need to do is stamp your sentiment and glue your piece of paper with the sentiment to the inside, and then of course, leave yourself room to write your personal message. Thanks for joining me today.